Hey everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have my May wrap up. The first book that I finished in May was Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian de Castel. This is the fourth and supposedly final book in the Great Coat series and if it was the final book in the series this is a brilliant place for it to end but I would really appreciate some more stories about Falcio and the Great Coats because they are just such amazing characters that I kept envisaging getting to watch their storylines develop on television and I really just became quite enveloped with their world. Basically I binge read these books one after the other and I really enjoyed my time spent within this world. What I enjoyed about these books was that although they are a series following the same cast of characters each book did focus on like a new big bad and what I enjoyed about Tyrant's Throne was how all of these different characters and threads from the different books came together in this final one for a big culmination and climax to the series that was superb and was really probably their greatest battle yet. It did involve some torment as all the books do. We learn more about the characters that we hadn't necessarily read before and we also got to see more of the great coats that we hadn't seen because we know that there were a hundred and something great coats went be five years before this series began and now there aren't that many and the whole point of this series I thought had been lost in the middle of this book and when I say point I mean the whole purpose the reason that Falcio was fighting seemed to be lost in this book and people who've read the book will and the series will understand what I'm talking about I thought how could the story continue if Falcio didn't have his purpose and De Castell really proves to us why Falcio fought the way he did and why these characters stood by him and it is a truly great swords and sorcery series for fans of Hercules Legendary Journeys, Xena Warrior Princess, Merlin, those types of shows. It was great, it was brilliant, it was like Robin Hood, it was just phenomenal and it spoke to a younger Charlie who, yeah, it spoke to a younger Charlie who felt extremely nostalgic reading these books and really did enjoy his time spent in this world. The next book that we read was, n no we need to stop doing this, we need to stop talking about ourselves as we. The next book that I read was Nutshell by Ian McEwan and this is a relatively short book that retells the story of Hal Hamlet from the point of view of a fetus. He is in the womb listening to his mother and his uncle discuss killing his father and basically he's an alcoholic. Well his mother's an alcoholic. This baby knows more about wine than I do. It's a relatively simple plot that we have seen before of two people plotting to murder a third because of love or revenge and as we know Hamlet is the classic revenge plot with Hamlet taking revenge on his uncle. However McEwen crafts all these different mediations on what is going on in the world at the moment within this and it does read like a polemic of the world in which we now live. It is a truly fantastic book and in I think there's less than 200 pages yeah in 198 pages Ian McEwen talks about the world talks about the psych the human psyche and really does a good job of talking about adult relationships I thought it was fantastic if you watch any of Sophie Carlin's reviews you will know that this is a book that she has been recommending and that is the reason that I purchased this book and it is a book that I think about it is a book that I could reread immediately it's a book that I definitely want to go and reread and it is a superb piece of fiction I have struggled to read Ian McEwan's books in the past but I'm wondering if that was more due to my age at the time and whether if I did go back and revisit his works whether I would appreciate them more now that I have read more adult literature and see what he's all about next I read The Year of Reading Dangerously by Andy Miller and this was a superb book. Anthony Miller, 
um, is a bit disenchanted. He knows that he always used to be a reader, but he has decided, he's always gone around with this list of books that he wants to read. So one day, he's out with his son, they visit a bookshop, he ends up purchasing The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. This is a book that he's always wanted to read and he never has read, and it's been on this list, this hypothetical list in his mind for years of books that he needs to read. And he reads it over a period of a few days and realises that he actually quite enjoyed the book and he wants to get back into reading and thus begins a year of reading books off of this list from Moby Dick to Jane Austen all these different classics and he reads books sometimes that are difficult books like An like I found Anna Karenina difficult he enjoyed it I'm gonna go back and read the translation that he read because man I didn't I just I don't like that book um, but I want to reread it after reading this book and I want to look at War and Peace and I want to look at all the books that Andy Miller talked about because this was such an inspiring book. It is a reader talking about reading and talking about these books and his experience reading them. And I think to anyone who, anyone else who reads books, any sort of reader or writer would really enjoy this book. I did. I thought that it was fantastic. It's got literary criticism and humour in here and I definitely would recommend it to all of my friends who do read books and do enjoy literature. Next I read The Muse by Jesse Burton. Odell Bastian gets a job at an art gallery working for Marjorie Quick and one day a picture comes into the art gallery and she knows nothing about this um, piece of art but it begins to awaken this mystery surrounding this piece of work. Then you go back to 1936 and Olive Schloss, yes, is the daughter of a renowned art dealer and she is an artist herself she's been accepted to a to a school of art but she's living in rural spain at a time of political tumult and she meets this brother and sister and the story really takes off from there i read this book in a day it's fantastic i started it on was it the second did i read this book on the second uh yeah i read this book on the second of may i started it in the morning and uh, and i read it up until i had to leave for my driving lesson then as soon as i got back i started reading it again and i finished it that day and it is truly a brilliant book and i it cemented for me the fact that Jesse Burton is a great writer and I'm really glad that I jumped onto the bandwagon when they first announced The Miniaturist and I know that I spend so much time, like I'll buy the book and then I don't read it to eat till a year later but I do really appreciate Burton's writing style and I think that in this book she really came into her own. She talks about creativity in this book so much that I had to buy my friend a birthday present and immediately put this on the list because we are both creative people and I think that this book would speak to the both of us because there is so much about how once you let a piece of art into the world it is no longer your own piece of art but also I know about the struggles that Burton went through when she was writing this book and you could certainly see that they had also been put down onto the page here. With The Miniaturist there was a point where I was like right, I'm putting this book down because I don't think that it's for me and then I went and I read the next chapter and I was, like, I was then completely invested in the story. Whereas in this book I was invested from the get-go and I didn't want the book to end. I did guess how the book was going to end. I did. I knew where this book was going immediately. Um, but that isn't any like demerit to the book at all. I still think that this is a superb piece of prose. I think that it is written extremely well. and. I think that the only reason I recognise what was going to happen is because I have read so many books before and um, I have looked at books from the perspective of a writer, you have to do that on a creative writing course anyway, and so I think some of the classic, some of the classic themes and ideas within literature were put into this book and I think that Burton worked really well uh, keeping this brevity and not going to, like she kept herself just disconnected enough to write this brilliant piece of prose. There are still the twists in here that you expect um, from a Burton novel that we saw with The Miniaturist, but this by far surpasses that book. I read this entire book and thought this was like a classic um, cinematic piece of prose. Like there was so much within this story that would speak to people and I recommend that everybody go out and read this book. Okay, so I've realised 
that I've gone on for a bit about four books already and I filled up this one shelf so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here and then I'm going to do a part two of this wrap up which will be my first part second part of a video ever but I have realized that I can ramble I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have read any of the these books please feel free to discuss them in the comments section and until next time that is all